Well, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday. It's Diane Covington. So I made a recording a week ago about 13 skills that I feel are crucial to you being successful at Mary Kay. Now, these have nothing to do with how good of a public speaker you are. This has nothing to do with your product knowledge. None of that. It has to do with just 13 basic core skills. And I made the recording last week or made the call last week. And I believe it might have been recorded later or parts of it or something. I don't know. But I got I got four or five instant messenger messages from people saying I wanted to, I heard about it or I wanted to listen to it or I asked, I called the consultant and asked her to listen to it and can you re-record it? So I'm going to do it again just for those of you who maybe missed it or those of you who want a recording of it or whatever. So these are 13 skills and I want you to write all 13 of them down. And then next to the skill, you're going to put a number. And the number is going to be on a scale of one to five. One being low, like, mm, I'm not even sure what that is, or I have no idea how to do that, um, all the way to five where your confidence level is very high. Like, oh, my gosh, I, I mastered that, or I'm, I'm strong enough at that, I feel confident. Um, maybe you're confident enough you could even help teach it at a meeting with your director. So on a scale of one to five, <clears throat> again, one being low, five being high. <clears throat> Excuse me, my allergies are terrible this morning. So the first thing I want you to write down is getting leads, getting a name and a number. Now, it could be from a facial box. How confident are you in putting out facial boxes? How confident are you at doing a pop-up table somewhere at an event where you can get names and numbers? And most importantly, warm chatter. You're out running around. You're in the grocery store. You see a super sharp lady. and She's got a couple kids with her. You're thinking, oh, my gosh, I would love to approach her for a facial or offer her a sample or something. What's your confidence level in approaching people, getting names and numbers, however you do it? Facial boxes, booth events, warm chatter, or hopefully all of the above. So write that down, getting leads, and on a scale of one to – you could just write these down and go back and rank yourself if that's easier. Okay, second thing I want you to write down is booking those leads. So you go home, you've got this pile of names and numbers. Could be from referrals, could be from facial boxes, could be from a bridal event. What is your confidence level that you will book them? that you will actually book them for appointments? Are you somebody who gathers leads, but your, your date book still isn't full enough? <clears throat> so what is your confidence level? I'm not asking about your skills, but I'm asking what is your confidence level on a scale of one to five on booking those leads? Third thing, coaching. So you book an appointment. She's excited. She says she's going to invite some friends. You give her an invitation or whatever. How confident are you in your coaching? Do you know what to do once you book a party? Do you send her the invitation? Do you send her a sample text to send out or um, tell her what to say to her friends? Or do you just leave it up to her? Um, do you find that sometimes they'll book a party and then it'll turn out just to be a single facial because they say, oh, well, no one's coming. So that would impact your coaching. So what is your confidence level on coaching it once you book it? Number four, doing the actual party or facial. So what is your confidence level at actually pampering the person? <clears throat> Zipping through <clears throat> maybe a tiny bit of background. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. On Mary Kay, the company, the product, walking her through whatever it is, the miracle set, the repair, whatever it is, doing the actual skincare pampering. Whether you're doing the back of the hand, on the face, whatever. Okay, so that's number four. Number five, the group close. You're all done pampering them, and now it comes to the point where you want to say, here are the sets, here are my prices, and you do it as a group and you walk them through the importance of buying as a set versus buying things individually. That's kind of how you do a group close and you romance the different sets, <clears throat> maybe give them a closing sheet where they can draw on it or however you close, what is your confidence level at closing in a group? Okay, number six, the individual close. So usually once they close, you close in a group, that's when I have the hostess bring out food. And usually she'll bring it out right to the table where everybody's already at anyway. And so then an individual close would be meeting with each person off to the side. Find a close couch, a close chair, whatever. And you close that individual person. Now virtually, that might mean you have a breakout room on Zoom, whatever. But what is your confidence level at that individual close, getting the sale? Are you great at the booking? You get there, you pamper everybody, you have a great time, everyone looks amazing, and then you pack up your stuff and you go home because you don't know how to ask for the sale. So what's your confidence level at the individual close getting the sale? All right, number seven, make, uh, sharing the Mary Kay story. Are you planting a seed during the class? Are you, what, like, what are you doing <clears throat> to 
maybe spark a little bit of interest in the Mary Kay opportunity? And then do you have an I story? Do you have the three sentence or the three minute, um, no more than or two minute <clears throat> I story about maybe why you came in, what you're most excited about now, what you see in your future. So past, present, future, however you share the Mary Kay story, what's your confidence level in sharing the Mary Kay story, okay? The next one is closing the team, the, the prospect. So you're maybe, you, sh- you plant the seed at the beginning of the party and at the end, at the individual close, you say, well, gosh, you know what? You, you seem to be in love with so much of the product. Have you ever thought about a side hustle, or have you ever thought about doing something like Mary Kay for some extra money, or whatever? But where, how are you at closing the recruit? So let's say she says, "Yes, I'd love to meet you for coffee tomorrow to hear more about what you do." All right, when you walk into that Starbucks to meet her for coffee, what's your confidence level that you're going to walk out of there with a brand new team member? Do you feel confident in knowing what to ask, how to listen, and how to close the recruit? Okay. <clears throat> The next one, which I believe is number nine, is getting referrals at your appointments. Whether they be facials or parties, how are you at either playing the referral game or handing out a separate sheet for referrals or flipping over the profile card or whatever? How are you at asking them for referrals? Okay, the next thing is managing your money. So that should be, I think that's number nine, managing your money. What is your confidence level? Again, scale of one to five, one being low, five being high. How good are you at managing your money? Um, In your business, that's the one thing I will say as an entrepreneur, you need to figure that out because if you aren't going to master your money, it's going to, you won't, you won't survive. See, you know, at Macy's or something, if you, someone pays you a hundred bucks and you go out to dinner with that hundred bucks, um, at Macy's, you take a hundred dollars out of the register, you're fired. In Mary Kay, you put, take that hundred bucks, you go out to dinner or do something crazy with it, it's like, okay, well, you're self-employed. You get to do whatever you want. <laughs> so managing your money on a scale of one to five. The next thing is managing your time. Are you overly optimistic and plan too much into a day? <clears throat> do you sometimes procrastinate? Like just in general, managing your time, what's your confidence level that you're a good time manager? Okay, the, almost, we're almost done. Number 12 is um, managing your emotions. Do you find yourself like one minute, you're, I'm so excited, I'm going to be a star consultant, it's the new year, I'm going to do sales core, I want to get a red jacket, I want to get in a Cadillac, whatever. Are you really good at, you know, managing your emotions for one minute, you're really excited, and then two phone calls later, or a couple no's, or a party postpones, and all of a sudden you're like, I don't want to do this, I quit. So one minute you're loving that starter kit, the next minute you want to throw it out the door. So how are you at managing your emotions, both the highs and the lows? And what's your support system like? So when you would say, and there's different ways to raise that, but right now, your confidence level, what would you say to managing your emotions? Okay. And then the very last thing is customer follow-up and customer service. And what customer service and customer follow-up is, so let's say you did a virtual party last night. And let's say there were four people at the party, two bought, the skincare, one bought a mascara and the other one didn't buy anything. What do you do with these four women? Are you immediately enrolling all four of them in PCP, the company mailing? Are you adding them to your VIP page? Do you only add the people that bought skincare? Do you do a two-day, two-week, two-month follow-up? Like, what system do you have? And if you don't have a system, it's totally okay. A lot of us haven't had systems, but let's get you a system. Since Mary Kay's got so many apps and so much help for that. So what's your confidence level that you... If you said to yourself, I have a great system, I'm 100%, you know, I'm very confident in my system of once I meet somebody and I facial them, I I plug them in. What does that look like? So what's your confidence level? That's that's good that you've got a good system. Is it five? I've got a great system, five or four? Or is it like, ooh, I'm just selling and um, yeah, I'm not doing very much follow-up, so maybe it's a one and a half or a two. Okay, so those are the topics. And again, I'll zip through them really fast. Getting leads is one. Booking was two, booking those leads. Three is coaching the booking. Number four is doing the party. Number five is a group close, you know, showing how to buy and sets and all that. Number six is the individual close, actually getting the sale. Number seven is um, sharing the Mary Kay story. The next one was closing the prospect. So actually closing the, closing the, we're not supposed to call it an interview, but closing the sharing appointment. Um, the next one was asking for referrals and getting referrals. 
not just asking for them, but actually getting referrals. The next one was managing your money. The next is managing your time. The next is managing your emotions. And the last one is customer service and follow-up. So what I'd love you guys to do is if you just type those in a list and then next to each one, rank your confidence level. That's specifically what I want you to ask yourself is, what is my confidence level at getting leads? What is my confidence level at holding a party? One to five, one being low, five being high, okay? Then what I want you to do is I want you to either take a picture of it or email it or get it to your director or whoever is your mentor or coach. Now, if you are in GoGive area as a director, you might not have a national that can go through this, but I know that you've got a <clears throat> sister director who could do this list as well, and you guys could kind of hold each other accountable. And it, it's not a judgment thing. It's a thing that says, okay, so <clears throat> let's say you want to go into DIQ. Let's say you really want to build a team and go, go into leadership, right? And you realize that there's three of those that you are a one or a two at. <clears throat> well, I'm pretty sure having been a successful top director for 30 years, that I would tell you that uh, if there's a few things that are ones and twos, you really want to get those to at least threes and fours because <clears throat> you can get all the leads in the world, but if you can't book them, you're sunk. Or if you're doing appointments, but you're, you have no problem getting the leads, you have no problem booking them. I actually have a consultant that's in this situation. She has no problem holding them. She's great at selling. But when it comes to sharing the opportunity, she's a one and a two, both sharing it and closing it. Well, if that skill doesn't get strengthened, <clears throat> she's going to always, there's always going to be that hole. Does that make sense? So this is, there's no judgment. There's no thing that says, oh my gosh, like there's a couple of things in there that I'm a two at. And I'm thinking, wow, how would I get this far and do this well without mastering that? But what that tells me is that's a little hole in my business that I could be doing a better job for my customers by by mastering that, by, by bringing my skill up. Does that make sense? I hope you guys found this helpful. Please not only fill that sheet out, but please send it to your director or your national, <clears throat> your coach, so that you can know what areas, what areas to do. And if you're a four at stuff, four and a five, let your director know that too. She would love to have you share it at the meeting. Whether your meetings are virtual or in person, it all matters. All right, you guys, have a fabulous day.